Hello, Wonder Hussy here, coming to you from the end of the world. That's right, I'm at the literal end of the world, out here in the farthest, most desolate reaches of the Mojave Desert. I know, you've probably always been curious what the end of the world is actually like. Well, I'm here to show you. Contrary to popular belief, the end of the world isn't made out of AI and TikTok and Kim Kardashian, Donald Trump, Fox News, MSNBC, culture wars, and men in women's bathrooms. Come to find out, the end of the world is actually made of plywood. See that? It's not that bad after all. Nothing but good old fashioned organic materials that you can buy at Home Depot and then coat in silver paint to make it look like some big, bad, evil, metallic, authoritarian statement. Actually, I think this art installation is probably kind of a send up of the Hollywood sign. Okay, you know how high on the hills above Los Angeles, there's those iconic letters on the mountains spelling out Hollywood. Well, this is the exact same font and more or less the exact same scale. So I'll bet you anything, the artists who built this thing had Hollywood in mind. But we could not be any farther from Hollywood. Well, okay, I guess, yes, we could be a lot farther from Hollywood. We are in California. We could be in Kazakhstan or someplace thousands of miles away, but metaphorically and culturally speaking, we are pretty dang far away from Hollywood right now. I'm in a place called Wonder Valley. That's right, Wonder Valley. I feel so at home here. And it's kind of this really weird, well, I was gonna say blighted, but blighted is in the eye of the beholder. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of busted post-apocalyptic looking shacks scattered about the desert out here, but some of us, myself included, find this to actually be almost like Disneyland or Wonderland. And that's why, or at least that's why I like to think they call it Wonder Valley. You know how they say one man's trash is another man's treasure? Well, the way I look at this is kind of like the old comic strip, Calvin and Hobbes. Okay, remember Calvin and Hobbes? It was a little boy and his stuffed tiger, and they went on all kinds of crazy adventures, but a lot of times there was some kind of like philosophical bent to them. Well, there was this one Calvin and Hobbes cartoon where Calvin, the little boy, is digging a hole in the backyard and he's covered in dirt and he's down up to about his chin, digging, digging, and Hobbes comes along and goes, what are you doing? And Calvin goes, I'm digging for treasure. And Hobbes goes, well, what have you found? And Calvin goes, ah, some dirty old rocks, some disgusting grubs and a weird root. And then Hobbes goes, just this morning? And Calvin goes, there's treasure everywhere. So the joke of that comic strip is, eh, all he found was a bunch of dirty old rocks and a root and some disgusting grubs. But to Calvin and Hobbes, that is treasure. To Calvin and Hobbes, and to me, Wonder Hussy, there's treasure everywhere. Even, or maybe especially, here at the end of the world. Know what I mean? Anyway, Wonder Valley is basically as far east as you can go from Los Angeles, I guess, before you run into the Great Void. You may have heard of the Buotes Void. Well, have you ever heard of the Great Southwestern Void? Well, if you haven't, I'm here to tell you about it. It's right over that way. And the way you get to it is, you get in your car from Los Angeles and you head east. And you keep driving. I think you get on uh, I-10. And you head east and you go down through Palm Springs, but you keep going east. You go through Desert Hot Springs and you keep going east and you go through Yucca Valley. Keep going east through Joshua Tree. You think you're in the middle of nowhere? Keep going east through 29 palms. You hear the bombs going off from the Marines practicing all these war games. And you think, okay, this has to be the end of the world. There can't possibly be anything farther east, but you keep going east and you end up here in Wonder Valley, which kind of really is the end of the world because if you keep going east from here, 
I mean, there's nothing. I mean, for reals, it's just wilderness desolation all the way till, oh gosh, I guess if you just kept going east, you might eventually hit the Colorado River somewhere around Parker, Arizona, I think. And by the time you get to Arizona, well, you are definitely not in Los Angeles anymore and you sure as sugar ain't in California anymore. So for all intents and purposes, this is the end of the world. You guys ever wondered what's on the other side of the end of the world? You know, it's an election year in the United States this year, and so there's a lot of talk and drama and fear-mongering about what's going to happen. This is it. Society is spiraling around the drain, and we're about to go down into the great cosmic sewer. <laughs> talk about a void. Well, there's a lot of conjecture about what will be on the other side of the end of the world, but there's only one channel that takes you to the literal other side of the end of the world. And that's the Wonder Aussie Show. Are you ready? Are you ready to go with me to the other side of the apocalypse? I mean, isn't that basically what the end of the world is, the apocalypse? Well, don't be scared. Come with me. We're gonna go around back and see what happens on the other side of the end of the world. Oh, gee, look at that. <laughs> the post-apocalypse is also made out of plywood. And everything is backwards. <gasps> what does it mean? Does this mean that the North and South Pole are reversed? Has everything gone topsy-turvy? Has the world as we known it been turned on its head? Or is it just art? Spoiler alert, it's just art. There is a ton of art out in this part of the desert. Probably because we are only three, four hours from LA, and so there's a lot of artists in the greater LA area that got priced out. They can't afford to live in LA, so they move a little bit farther east, and then they can't afford to live in Joshua Tree, so they move a little farther east, and the next thing you know, they end up here, swept up against the door sill of the world at the end of the world. And I personally think it's fantastic. I've been camped out over here with some friends for the last couple days. And we have had a fantastic time talking to a bunch of the local people who live out here. There's a really cool little local roadhouse just up here that we had some drinks at, listened to some music last night. I think it's a great place. I personally am a huge fan of all the art installations. And so today, before we pack up and roll on, we thought we would go check out some more art in the area. Like I said, there's a ton and there happens to be kind of like an outdoor art museum called the Glass Outhouse, just up the road. So we're gonna head over and check that out. Okay, we have arrived at the Glass Outhouse. That's the name of this quirky outdoor art installation we're about to check out. Now the sign here says exit but I think it's actually the entrance. You know how these irreverent artists are? Always trying to confuse you. Anyway, there's all kind of little critters welcoming, welcoming us out here to this beautiful outdoor installation in the middle of this gorgeous desert. There's all kinds of stuff to go check out. I mean, oh God, I don't know where to look first, but look at this cool tiki head. Really a nice tiki totem. And then look at this. It's one of those old timey desks like from an old school. Yeah, you know, like you sit here and then this is what you write on. You open it up, that's where you keep your books and pencils. And this little hole here, some of you might actually be old enough to remember what this little hole is for. And don't be dirty, it's where your ink well went. Remember when you wrote with an ink pen? <laughs> remember uh, back in the day, Laura Ingalls Wilder, like the, the girl who was sitting in front of the, the bad boy in class and her braids were hanging down her back and he always used to dip the end of her braid into his inkwell, so that way when she moved her head, she got ink on her dress. That's what happened with that kind of desk. Okay, I'm actually really curious to go in this chapel. I mean, there's all kinds of quirky, funky little animals, cactus, conch shell, <laughs> lions, spiral staircase to nowhere, but I don't know. I mean, out of everything here, this chapel catches my eye. Oh, it says, welcome. Open 24 hours. Let's go in. Oh my gosh, look how cool this is. It's a little tiny 
chapel with stained glass windows made out of bottles. Look at that, those are glass bottles. And a beautiful desert, stained glass desert scene. I absolutely love that. And then a cross made out of glass brick. I'm not sure you can tell. Those are glass brick. And then look at this amazing altar. It's a cross section of an old tree, like petrified wood or something like that. Or maybe it's just regular wood. It's sort of a painting, I guess, or a charcoal drawing of Christ. Free Bibles. We have a prayer jar. Leave your note here and we will pray with you. And for you, there's power in prayer. Oh, wow. So uh, should we leave a little prayer? Why not? I'm going to write a little prayer down on this paper. And then if you're watching this and you have something that you want to pray for, we'll just mentally write it down and I'll tuck it in the jar for you. Okay. I wrote my prayer down. Now I'm going to tuck it in the prayer jar. I'll tuck your prayer in the prayer jar too. And now presumably, well, somebody's going to pray for us and our prayers will come true. Oh, look, this says free. Take one. Oh, look, they're little glass outhouse tongue depressors. This is so cute. Oh, my gosh. I don't have any cash with me, though. I'd like to leave a donation. Before I leave, I'm going to go back to my car and get a donation because I want to keep this in my in my car with me. It's sort of like a good luck totem to remind me of my prayer and the fact that someone somewhere out there in the desert at the end of the world is praying for Anyway, really cute little church. Look at these little tiny pews. They're, each one is only big enough for one person. They got the Ten Commandments hanging on the wall. There's two more one-seater pews. I love these little one-seater pews. And then what's this book? Is this a Bible? Oh, yeah, isn't that the Tower of Babel? There's the Garden of Eden. Oh, yeah, look at that. The Bible. Oh, what's this? I didn't even notice this. It says holy bible but it's just a big piece of wood wow it's like a wooden bible i guess art piece really interesting i love this little chapel actually reminds me of another chapel i went to once way out in the middle of the desert in nevada i guess you can find these little lonely desert chapels if you're looking for them scattered all over the place out there. Super cool. And then look at this. I just noticed there's a cemetery right next to the chapel. And look what's buried in the cemetery. Hate, greed, malice, sorrow, envy, conceit, pride, fear, war. Mm, I feel like war might be kind of a zombie because no matter how many times you bury it, it seems to come back. I mean, aren't there about three, four, five, ten different wars brewing around the world right now. Sadly, I think there are, but hey, there's no war brewing here right now. Today is just a beautiful overcast day out here in the desert. I don't want to think about war. I just want to think about all this crazy art. Bears, skeleton, muffler man, headless horseman. Look at that Bob's Big Boy. Remember Bob's Big Boy restaurants? Look at that. It's like there's an alien engaged in a shootout with Bigfoot. Why, guys? Oh, I see both of those aliens are training guns on Bigfoot. Now, why would you guys? Oh, you know what? I am so sorry. I just realized I got a relatively sternly worded email a few weeks back from a viewer who informed me that I should stop using the terms Bigfoot and aliens because did you realize those are offensive terms? Okay, Bigfoot doesn't want to be called Bigfoot. That's like calling a, well, I won't say, but Apparently the appropriate term to use for a Bigfoot is Sasquatch, Yeti, Swamp Ape, or Skunk Ape. So I guess I'll, I'll go with Sasquatch. Apologies, Sasquatch. And then when it comes to these guys, you're not supposed to say aliens, you're supposed to call them extraterrestrials or star children. Uh, that's what I was told anyway. So apologies, Sasquatch and star children. I certainly didn't mean to offend you. Oh, I gotta kiss this guy on the cheek. Oh, when's the last time you kissed a star child on the cheek? Golly, there is all kinds of crazy stuff at this outdoor art museum. I'll be honest. I mean, I've known about this place for a few years and I never went out here. I mean, I, I heard that it was cool. I just didn't get around to it, whatever. This place is way, way cooler than I even expected and it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, check. look at this beetle. I love that they didn't just turn it into a beetle like a bug they turned it into a tortoise because if you think about it these things really do kind of look like desert tortoise how cool is that look at his little head and neck his little eyeballs they painted the tortoise shell all over it 
He's got a little tail. Oh, I love this. Look at this. It's like a gorilla made out of metal. Oh, look at that. It's a gorilla fighting Godzilla. Godzilla versus the gorilla. Oh, and then look, there's a hippo in the background. Oh my gosh, look at this hippo. Ah. Hey, you might not realize this, but hippos are among the deadliest animals in Africa. Most people think lions, tigers. Hippos are very aggressive uh, around water and they, they kill a lot of people. So don't mess with hippos. And you know, you might think the gorilla and Godzilla were the power players. I'll bet you anything that a hippo comes in and takes both of them out. Oh, look, what's this? It's a little path leading down to this mirror, right? Isn't that a mirror? Yeah, look, there's my legs. And then there's a bench on the other side. I guess you can sit on this bench and it's also mirrored on this side. Let's see what happens if we sit down. <laughs> Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> Looking at the reflection, it looks like, well, I don't know how else to say it, but it's a big old pussy. Is that what this piece is really meant to represent? I mean, that's just my best guess. <laughs> wow, this place is a trip. Let me see what my friends think of it. Hey, uh, Gregor, what do you think of this place? I think it's very artsy coming from freeze art week last weekend in LA. Oh, so you're in the LA art scene. Uh, we have a LA arts critic here. Straight from Hollywood, everybody. Golly, my friends are nutty. Especially that guy there. You might recognize him. Vic Meyer. <laughs> He's filming a video for his channel <laughs> in front of that mirror. What'd you say? It's a fun mirror? Fun I'm just curious if he thinks it means the same thing I think. Or if I just have a dirty mind. Look at this. It's a bunch of skeletons lifting weights. There's a skeleton on an elliptical. There's a skeleton on the stationary bike. Look. <laughs> Ghoul's Gym. Ah! I love a good pun. Ooh, look down here. We got dragons, skeleton on a toilet, tiger, little bit of everything here at the Glass Outhouse. In fact, I wonder if this place is called the Glass Outhouse because there's an actual glass outhouse. I mean, is that what this is down here? There's this pathway and this one isn't lined with bottles. It's lined with solar lights. So it looks kind of fancy and it's leading to what to me look like two glass outhouses. Oh my gosh, what do you suppose is inside this? Do you think it's just an outhouse? Could it really be just an outhouse? Or is there some kind of amazing surprise in here? Let's find out. Great. Oh, it is. Oh my God, it's an outhouse. But you know what? I think it's made out of some kind of special glass where we can see out plain as day. But those on the outside looking in, you can't see anything. So if you ever wanted to take a tinkle while looking around yourself at the beautiful outdoors, but not have to worry about anybody spying on you, well, this is the place to do it. Make sure I latch it. Why not, man? It's not every day I get the chance to take a whiz in a glass outhouse. Wow, how about that? There was even toilet paper. And the toilet is real nice and clean. Okay, I don't know about you. You might be too cool for school, but I thought that glass outhouse was pretty cool. Looks like there's another one. Let's check out this one too. I guess it's the same thing, I think somebody's in that one I can hear. <laughs> and they're probably freaking out because they see a camera pointed at them. Remember, they can see us. We just can't see them. Okay, I'll leave them alone. I'll just keep going and see what else there is to check out here. What's this? Oh, just another pretty face at the glass outhouse. Oh, I guess you put your face through that. <laughs> like this. Hi, Mom! <laughs> hey, Vic, are you enjoying the glass outhouse? I am. This is pretty extensive. Uh, have you been in the actual glass outhouse? There's a glass outhouse. Yeah, look, right over here. Look. It's not just a... No, there's two outhouses and they're made out of glass, but it's two-way glass, so... I already felt like it'd be a great name for an album. Well, a great name for an album, <laughs> a great name... I think somebody might be in that one. I'm not sure. You can try the door. Hello. Yeah, check it out. It's super cool. Oh, yeah, go so go, go on that one. Look, it's a beautiful outhouse, but you, you can you see can out, see but out. no one can see, no in. can see in. Yeah, you can take a whiz by looking at nature and, like, we can't see you. Believe me, I think... Uh, you prefer it this way. How about that? He's probably gonna blow up that outhouse. We better give him his privacy. Okay, so there's the woman who runs this place. 
Laurel. There's her. Oh, look, there's her chair, and there's a cat sleeping on her chair. Oh, what a cutie. Hi, baby. Anyway, she said there's a really cool kaleidoscope in here I want to check out. Oh, man, there's little cats everywhere here. Oh, hi, little cat. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, so there's all kinds of cool artwork hanging on the walls. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, it is, but I'm here to see this dang kaleidoscope. Where is it? Oh, a gift shop. Oh, look, they got some funky clothes. Oh, look how cute these are. Hugs. Oh, here's the kaleidoscope. Non-selfie kaleidoscope. Take pictures with a friend. Okay, you look through that side. <laughs> dang, look at this. It's a hot dog. <laughs> Putting ketchup on himself. I guess that's sort of like how I feel when I'm putting on makeup. Oh, look over here, there's a fridge with free drinks. Wow, they don't even charge for the drinks. Oh my God, look, there's all kinds of sodas in here. Wild, what a cool place. It's all honor system. I guess they get by on selling stuff in the gift shop and donations. Speaking of donations, I better get some money out of my car for that uh, tongue depressor I took out of the chapel. $5. Seems like a reasonable price to pay for a tongue depressor with a piece of art on it, but more than just for the tongue depressor, it's a way of keeping this place funded because I think it's so cool and it's absolutely free. You know, it doesn't cost a dime to come in here and look around. They even give you free drinks. Five bucks is the least I can give them. Okay, wow, I guess I've seen pretty much everything there is to see. Well, no, I can't say that. I feel like this is one of those places we'll never see everything there is to see. And so it's a place I can definitely see coming back to in the future. Yeah, there's no telling what crazy new stuff will pop up here out of the desert sands, here at the Glass Outhouse, and actually here in this part of the country in general, at the end of the world.